It is now recording. Um, I'm going to put it near where the, oh, where's the, here we go. Okay, so first to start off, Mia, could you say your name, how old you are, and how long we've known each other? Okay. Hi, my name is Mia Crump. I'm 16 years old, and I've known Lily for about four years. Since middle school. Yes. Okay. Um, and Mia, is there any particular life goal that you want to achieve? Uh, yes. Thanks for asking that question. I think the one goal is to try to like reach more people and reach new friendships with them because I'm in a good stage right now where I know pretty much a lot of people. I just want to know, like, if there's, like, another way to get other people from other different groups, groups that I might not be a part of, and try to become friends with them, and try to, like, introduce myself, and, like, be, like, start, like, a normal conversation, or maybe get their number if they feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. That's great. And, um, so in the past, you've mentioned that you've wanted to be a musician. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, I'd love to. So I've been a musician for for seven years. I started playing the piano. Before I did that, I played a little bit of drums, a little bit of guitar. I didn't really know how to play it. And um, the first proper lesson was piano. I used to do classical music like Beethoven, Bach, and Mozart in elementary school. And um, as soon as I got to the end of elementary school, I started to get bored with it. So I moved to Ottawa School of Music, which has totally has changed my music life. And and I joined in such a good community, it's such a good school to be in. And it has like so many different music I could like, choose from, like to like R and B. To the charisma and blues, to alternative rock, and all those. Well, playing a instrument means that it doesn't matter what genre you play. It's about like, having fun with it. And mm-hmm. after that, that's when I started to pursue my start my own band, which started like a year ago. And I'm in the composing composing start now. And yeah, it's. Music has totally changed me and my life. Wow, can you tell us a little bit about how music has changed your life? Yeah, so sometimes it can be quite hard hard to say how I feel. If I put it in a song, it can release the happiness or the angerness that's really been holding in, and just let it out and singing makes it easier for me. That's really cool, Mia. And... You mentioned that you have a band. Could you tell me the name of the band and a little bit about it? Yeah, so when I started a year ago, it used to be called Summer State because I was copying based bits off my music teacher, and he had his own band, and I didn't want to copy off of him, so I had to change my name to The Grew Up. I think that's a good one because whenever I, each band member comes in, that's when, like, you can, like, grow up in one path, and I did, like, smaller stuff, smaller stuff about it with the band, but now I am having a break from, a, from one of the platforms that I'm on, and I took a break from it, and I started the composing part because of, of the band, because of, when you say a band, that you can mean you need to like put like real real live music out onto like other music platforms and try to make it viral enough to create fans. Mhm. So um, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, or let me pull up the exact date. But on Instagram, you posted a video that I thought was really cool of you giving a speech about. Um, let me see what day it was, July 12th, about how de- uh, special Down syndrome people can be. Could you tell me a little bit about that speech? Uh, 
because usually some people have trouble speaking to the public eye, like going down to other people feel scared about. I just want to talk about like how special that person can be because they're not different and they're still hitting the same milestones as they are. And and they are reaching the same goals as the other people. And and I'm just telling them that they can like join any groups they want. For example, Best Buddies is a good one because it shows all abilities and special special Olympics too to play like sports with everyone, with all abilities. Rather than just being the only one the being the only one disabled person being being there like me for like Roosevelt, for example like Roosevelt gymnastics. Yeah, you told me about that. Um, and that, that was super cool. Um, so most people face challenges when it comes to achieving their goals. What are some of the challenges that you faced when it comes to achieving your goal of becoming a musician? Ooh, that's a tough question to, to answer, but I think I can answer this in my ability. Um, I think that the, a few challenges has I, what in, what are those challenges in life that come? I think the challenge was probably like the practicing part because everyone says because everyone thinks that they're perfect, but I think if they use practice makes perfect, I feel like that gives them practice. Mm-hmm. That gives them more practice and extra time and dedication to make it perfect and when you perform in front of live people like I did because sometimes other people by say have a challenge once they get to the recital and then the rest say like they like I suck which they really didn't suck they just didn't, didn't know find another way to play but if you're like right there with your music teacher it can make it more fun and it can really increase like how not like increase not increase it just by having fun with it. Mm-hmm. It's not like that you're having facing too many challenges in life. Yeah. Okay. And um if you had to say something to youth our age with disabilities who want to pursue their dreams, what would you say? I would say is that it might take a lot to practice but if you are positive in the way you are, I think there's a big chance that you are able to able to reach dreams and reach as many goals as you want. And it can be quite hard. Mm-hmm. And Mia, you've always been someone who's very positive and optimistic. Um, have you always been this positive or was there a time in your life where you started believing in this yeah I had trouble having to stay, to stay positive sometimes I think negative about myself but if I'm more positive it's most likely that I'm missing happy who I am and not stopping my dreams at all mm-hmm. it's important to like believe in ourselves right right okay um what instruments do you play and um, could you tell us a little bit about a song you're working on? Oh, okay. So I think the song that I like to play a lot that I put in my band, which is the Oompa Loompa song from the the Oompa Loompa song from the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That was a really fun and, and silly game game not game song to play. I I thought this was a little silly when mm-hmm. I looked at the video and we started to laugh the whole time. But I think the song that I liked a lot is The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. He was a very famous physician back in the 80s. Not 80s, not the 80s, like 18 something something. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I think I enjoyed playing I, I enjoy playing because it gives like uh, gives me like a good 
a good way to spread a good message. Mm -hmm. And um, what does music mean to you? Ooh, um, I think music means a lot to me because even though I have a lot of emotions in, in me, it can be quite hard to paint in a public eye. But if I, but if there's one thing that means to me is music because that's one thing I feel good about mm -hmm. myself and not stopping myself at all. And who would you say is your biggest inspiration? Ooh, I think my biggest inspiration is probably Chris Nickick and Kelly Kilman because he was a very famous, um, he's my, he's my teacher, my, my, my music teacher, and he's been helping me with, with my band a lot, and which I think is a good way to do it because Chris Nickick is very famous, famous in my eyes because he is, he has also had Down syndrome and he gave speeches and won the ESPN award and I've seen him do the half Iron Man in Hawaii, which I'm very proud of him for that and which I like to watch him do and I think that Kevin Kilman is a great inspiration for me because he was the one who started my band and I felt like that if I stuck with him, it might be easy for me to, it might, and I don't, I don't want, I'm not trying to like, end with him for good, I just want to stick with him because I want to like make sure that I can like practice with, practice, not like practice and help me compose the music because he is the um one helping me out with that part of it. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that I believe it was Chris who also has Down syndrome. Why is it yeah. important to see um why is it important to see people who um like role models who have Down syndrome? Well, I think I think I think that they've they have the, almost the same dreams as me because they have because I'm pretty sure that Chris was a part of Special Olympics just doing the Iron Man because he started very slowly because most Down syndrome people start fast or slow. I was when I was I was very fast and he was slow. He was in a walker, but now he's like walking around like other people and. And he's very joyful, and he loves to give out free hugs to other people, be, people because lots of Down syndrome people are very friendly to other people, and others not so much. But I'm pretty sure that if I wanted, wanted, to, and he gave speeches too, to like other people, and I think I, I think I can relate to him in some ways because. I've done speeches for Miss Buddies, and I've also done Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. Just like him, but in a different sport. And what does having Down syndrome mean to you? Ooh, I think having Down syndrome really means a lot because I think... <laughs> um, I, well, it basically means that I don't feel different. I just... It's just a different... A separate chromosome is in my body, and I can still hit the same things. But I, but I think that other people might don't might feel different. But if, but I think it's special if your parents like really support, really support them mm -hmm. in a way that can like help them. Like for example, for example, like reaching donation money, don donation money to the down syndrome of Puget Sound. And yeah, yeah, I just feel really joyous to to be friends because my other friends have Down syn syndrome syndrome since I met them since preschool. That's so cool, Mia. And what would you say to those people that you say might see it differently? What would you say to them and say like you're uh -huh. wrong or Okay, so I think if I was to say something to them, if they feel different, is that there might be a high chance that they may not survive because there's different types of Down syndrome that you can get. 
Oh, I think that, sorry, I think I might have worded that confusingly. Um, I was thinking that you were talking about people who might feel different about um, your Down syndrome, but I think I misunderstood what you said. Yeah. Well, there's different types of Down syndrome that might still feel different. Because there's translocation, Robert is doing translocation, which affects chromosome 21, and it can be affect to their brain or their spinal cord. And if it goes to the spinal cord, they might be per, per, permanently paralyzed or a permanent brain issue. And that can really change them. But if they survive that, there would be a high chance that they might, they might survive. Mm-hmm. And I think the other type, chromosome 321, that's the same thing as chromosome, chromosome 21. I don't know that many types of Down syndrome, but those are the two that I know and can explain easily on top of my head. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really um, powerful the other day you texted me when we were talking about disabilities because, you know, I have a disability myself. Um, You know, I wear hearing aids and I was talking to you about that and you were talking about how you don't see Down syndrome as a disability rather as kind of like a privilege. Could you tell me about that? Because I think that that is super interesting. Yeah. Well, I think that other people are built to like listen to other people because from my own experience in the family, I'm the one who has Down syndrome. And I think in um, my teammate, her uncle has Down syndrome too. And I think they can relate in a way, but being the only one with Down syndrome is making you feel like you it's intelligent. And my grandfather doesn't have disability at all. He has a hearing hearing aid because he can't hear very well, obviously. But I think there would be a good chance that they feel good about themselves and think positive. Even though they have some feel ups and downs, they might feel confident in themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and just a couple more questions. Um, why is it important for you to see people with Down syndrome represented in the media, like in movies or in um, TV shows? What does that mean to you? I don't really see like Down syndrome people in movies quite a lot. I think I mainly see them on Instagram. There's one name, Instagram name called Ken, Kendley Kind. Her name is Grace K, and she has Down syndrome. And I think her and her mother is are trying to help the Down syndrome community where she lives. And she's a girl, and um, she um trying to help out and trying to say like how special that they can be. Mhm. That's super cool. And I really wanted to um in this interview include some um parts of you playing music, but I know you're at your grandparents' house right now, so you probably don't have your instruments with you. Um, I did bring the piano. You do have a piano? Yes, they brought the keyboard with me. Is there any way that I you think, could... I think I can record it later. Yeah, and then could you, you could you send that to me? That would be great. Or any clips of you singing or anything like that. That would be awesome. I will. Okay. okay. Um, I think I have like maybe two more questions and then if you have anything you want to add or anything you feel like it's important that is in the interview, you can feel free to say anything. Okay. Okay. Um, let me say, let me see. Okay. Um, you spoke earlier about times that you maybe saw yourself, um, in a negative light or in a negative way, what what was that, what were those times like, and what led to you seeing yourself um, negatively? Yeah, so I think of, this was about like three years ago, when I was, as I was saying, like I suck, I think I felt, I think I, I think I might have thought a little more n- negatively, but, but it can be very helpful when someone goes up and gives you pointers. I feel like that kind of helps. Because it might sound, because other people, people might laugh at you, but if I, I just felt like 
nervous at the same time because I can play one hand, but not the other hand. But if I have two hands, two hands like one use my use my hand as the right hand, and use the teacher that you're practicing that you're practicing with using the left hand, which can really really impact the song and make it feel really nice in its own way that it's been arranged with the notes. Awesome. And um, let me think. I think we have a lot of good um, material here. I just need the clip to be a little bit longer, so I'm trying to think of a couple more questions. Um, Okay. And let me think. So tell me a little bit about I know that you've posted in the past about um, disability rights and disability um, advocacy. <laughs> Could you tell me a little bit about that and like why you think that's important? Yeah, I think it's important that when you are in a big group or a small group that you want to share your own experience. Experience, that's what advocacy is. But if you're an advocate, that means you are a rightful person that should stand up to like a bigger community. For example, I spoke at a, I, I had to wake up early to do an Oracle speech for Odan, which is a community which I had to speak for, which was quite nerve wracking, but I was able to pull it together and talk in front of everyone. And I think everyone loved, loved it and wanted to finish, finish with it. You feel so much good about yourself, and a whole bunch of people might comment on you or give praises to you because you're doing so well, and they want to know who you are as a person. And I think that if you're an advocate, you might feel special. Mm -hmm. And what was that speech on? The speech was on like how I started with with the with the group for Miss Body. So. It was talked about a little bit like how I, how I started like three years ago at the ambassador's training. And and um after that and then after that I and then after that I um talked about like a little bit about myself, for example for example, um when I became the runner up back in twenty eighteen for Special Olympics and that they became a champion in 2019 for Special Olympics. And then I talked about like how I made my speech about best buddies in my high school because I am a best buddies high school participant and I'm about to be the secretary next year because the senior, the senior is leaving, which is good to change. And which is, which, which is exciting. And and then after that, we I talked about like how. And then I talked about like the best buddies, best buddies of Washington Student Advisory Board, which people with other, which is like a board board meetings, which I'm a board member of, and being a new co chair for the next school year, and. And I've been like a part of that, and talk, and talk, and we did a Bellingham ball because we went to Bellingham. So we decided to. So we decided to um. Put put it together. It took a while because we wanted to like figure out what activities we should do, but we did. It was like a dancing room, a dance, yeah, a dance one and. Crafts. Yeah, I remember crafts. that. I went to that. My sister and I went to the prom. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. And the uh, games, it was fun. And I'm just so proud that the student advisory board that put it and, and, and myself put together because we wanted to celebrate, celebrate it. I thought it was quite fun. And for our friendship walk, we raised about like $500. And I felt very lucky that I reached out to CPWM, 
Columbia Pacific Wealth Management. That's a company that that that's a business that really liked and support, and my dad's a part of because he is the president on his board, and and they really try their best. And with the marketer and the other people who are reaching out, reaching out and helping us to reach the best buyers' goals and telling the other people, other people, other people can get speeches. Even though they have a disability or doesn't have a disability, they can feel really special about themselves. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And my last question is, um, why was why is Best Buddies so important to you, and why is creating spaces where people with disabilities can thrive and um, feel included so important? Oh, um, I I really started because I wanted to get new friends to get new friends in high school, but when I went to Washington, I met so many new people, and that can really improve frequently. If I met new people. Mm-hmm. So, um, Best Buddies is important to you because you can meet new friends and have new experiences? Yeah, yeah because the only friends I had were the Best Buddies of Roosevelt. And that's pretty much it for my, for my first year in high school. But when I joined Washington, I got like, I reached, I reached more new people. Mm-hmm. And, um, how does specifically Best Buddies Roosevelt? How does that community um, make you feel? Do they make you feel included? Do they make you feel um, happy? Yeah, yeah, it made me feel happy because we first started because it, because every year at Roosevelt you get your own buddy for the year, which which they do, and so the first day was just like a little celebration, and basically basically like what Best Buddies is all, is all about. It's about like having fun with other people, other people with other abilities, and what you can do. I think the main part I start with this advice is that you get a buddy pair, and you can you can like hang out with them. Mhm, that's so cool. Thank you so much, Mia, for doing this interview with me. And of course, um, enjoy this. When you get back, we need to hang out. I know that you'd said, well, you don't get back for a little bit, right? Because then you're gonna go to. Yeah. Where are you going to go after Pennsylvania? We are going to New Jersey, Stone Harbor. Oh, wow, New Jersey. I've never been. I've never even been to the East Coast, so that's super cool. Yep. Did my sister tell you that she's going to college in Connecticut in the East Coast? Oh, nice. My dad went to Connecticut for college. What school did he go to? Connecticut. Oh, wow. Yeah, my sister's going to Wesleyan, which is in Connecticut, so she'll be so far away, Mia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, okay, awesome. So, any last things you want to add? Any last words? If not, I can wrap this up. Um, is there a way I can um, listen to it for myself and share it with other people? Yeah, for sure. So, I can send you this tape um, without any edits or without any of the other stuff. I can send you the raw tape and the raw like footage, okay. I guess. I could also send you, once I finish the final interview, I could send you it. It's going to be posted on KUW's website, and so you could access it there, which would be super cool. So I can send you all of that stuff. Okay, I think it's better to be the raw one, the unedited version. Awesome, I'll do that. And perfect, okay. Uh, Thank you so much, Mia. I might have a couple... Oh, also, this is the one last thing. If you could send me the... Uh, the recording of you playing piano yeah. and okay. maybe one of you singing, that would be great. So I can add those. Okay. And um, if you could send me a photo of yourself that we they can post on the website that you really like, maybe one of you with an instrument. I know on Zoom your like profile picture is one of you with like a guitar. So something like that maybe that relates to your music would be super cool. Oh no, you froze. I'll, I'll use that one. Okay, awesome. Um, it was good talking to you, Mia. Hopefully you'll see you soon. <laughs> All <Okay>. right. <laughs> Bye, Mia. Bye. Love you. Love you too. See you later. See you. Okay. <laughs> um, 
I don't know if I'm supposed to say the end part, but I'm going to because I think I should. So, for Radioactive, this is Lily Turner. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded so <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Okay. Am I supposed to say? Okay. For radio, maybe for KUW from Radioactive, this is Lily Turner. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. Okay. Oh. Okay. For KUW from Radioactive, this is Lily Turner.